I've been running my Apple Mac Studio with external Thunderbolt 4 enclosures, but today I'm upgrading to the Acasis TB501 Pro Thunderbolt 5 SSD enclosure. Before we dive into the results, let me show you my original setup so that you can see why this upgrade actually beats Apple's own internal storage. So I recently picked up Apple's new Mac Studio base model M4 Max, 36 GB of unified memory and 512 GB of storage. Now, half a terabyte on a premium desktop might sound limiting, but paying Apple's upgrade prices is worse. Here in the UK, it's £200 extra for one terabyte of storage and £600 extra to go up to two terabytes of storage, which is a huge markup compared to external options. Thankfully, my Apple Mac Studio has four Thunderbolt 5 ports, each with 80 gigabits per second bandwidth, making external SSD enclosures the smarter option for storage expansion. In my initial setup, I used two Thunderbolt 4 enclosures, each with two terabyte drives inside. For example, my OWC 1M2 enclosure with a Gen 4 Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus SSD gave me about three gigabytes per second transfers on my M4 Mac Mini. Connected to one of my Mac Studio's Thunderbolt 5 ports, Atto Disk Benchmark showed write speeds go up to 3.61 gigabytes per second and read speeds go up to 3.71 gigabytes per second. In contrast, Blackmagic Design's disk read test showed only a small increase in read speeds. In my experience, it's less consistent in Atto, but I'll include the results for those of you who do like to use it as a reference. Good performance overall from my Thunderbolt 4 enclosure, but it's clear that I wasn't fully tapping into what Thunderbolt 5 can deliver. As luck would have it, my friend David Harry has been reviewing Thunderbolt 5 accessories on his tech channel, including the Acasis TB501 Pro enclosure. Thanks to his introduction, Acasis sent me the TB501 Pro for testing, which I do obviously appreciate, but as always, they have no say in my results or opinions. The enclosure retails for $239 direct from Acasis and supports Thunderbolt 3, 4 and 5 connections, along with USB 4, 3.2, 3.1 and 3.0. As I've noted in past reviews, Thunderbolt 3 systems can sometimes show reduced speeds with newer enclosures, so keep that in mind. Inside, the enclosure is powered by Realtek's RTL 9210 controller and Intel's GHL 9480 B2 Thunderbolt 5 controller, which allows NVMe SSDs up to 8 terabytes and supports Gen 5 drives. I'll cover Gen 5 support later since there are a few caveats. The aluminium chassis has a premium feel, and the toolless design means you don't need a screwdriver to install drives. Cooling is handled by an integrated fan, though there's no room for third party heat sinks. Inside the box, you get the Encasis enclosure itself, along with thermal pads, an SSD size adapter, plastic stoppers, a user manual, and a 50cm Thunderbolt 5 cable. The enclosure has the same premium aluminium construction as my OWC1M2 enclosure, but it's noticeably smaller. One usability difference is the dedicated button to switch the cooling fan from automatic temperature control to always on mode. I started by removing the 2TB Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus SSD from my OWC1M2 enclosure and installing it into the Acasis enclosure. The process was simple. Lift the cover, insert the SSD with a plastic stopper, add the 1mm thermal pad and close it back up. No tools required. Connected to the Mac Studio, in my first test I set the fan to auto and the fan didn't activate, but Atto still showed impressive results. 6.49 gigabytes per second reading and 6.4 gigabytes per second writing. Blackmagic came in closer to 5 gigabytes per second for both reading and writing. I repeated the test with the fan forced on, but the results didn't change, suggesting that passive cooling was enough for this Sabrent drive. What really surprised me was how it compared to the Mac Studio's internal SSD. In Atto, my internal storage had a respectable 6.13 gigabytes per second reading, but just 3.38 gigabytes per second writing, which means the Encasis enclosure with the Gen 4 Sabrent SSD inside actually outperformed Apple's own internal drive. To really take advantage of the Acasis enclosure, I wanted a larger SSD. 
ideally four terabytes or eight terabytes. So I could consolidate my editing setup into one enclosure instead of two. I ended up grabbing a good Amazon warehouse deal on a Western Digital 4TB SSD, the WD Black SN850X. It's a Gen 4 SSD rated for 7.3 gigabytes per second reading and 6.6 gigabytes per second writing, making it a strong match for Thunderbolt 5. I moved my Sabrin SSD back into the OWC enclosure and installed my new Western Digital SSD into their cases enclosure. With the fan on auto, Atto showed 6.65 gigabytes per second for reading, but only 5.36 gigabytes per second for writing. Blackmagic reported around 5.7 gigabytes per second reading and 4.8 gigabytes per second writing. Retesting gave mixed results, sometimes higher, 6.7 gigabytes per second reading, 6 for writing, but repeated benchmark tests quickly saw performance drop to around 5.75 gigabytes per second reading and 4.4 gigabytes per second writing. This made it clear the Western Digital Drive was running much hotter than my Sabrent SSD and the fan wasn't kicking in soon enough on auto. With the fan forced on, results did stabilize, consistently around 6.7 gigabytes per second reading and 5.4 gigabytes per second writing. So whilst the Western Digital SSD gives me double the capacity and slightly higher reading speeds, its write speeds top out at around 5.5 gigabytes per second with the fan on, which is still noticeably slower than the 6.4 gigabytes per second I was getting from the Sabrent. If you're running workloads that write heavily for long periods of time, like cloning a drive and moving terabytes of data, it's worth switching the fan on to maintain performance. For everyday use though, it may not be required. In my test, I left the fan off and copied nearly 10 gigabyte of YouTube video files between the cases enclosure with my Western Digital SSD and my Mac Studio's internal storage. And in each transfer, it finished in just a few seconds with no issues. On a Thunderbolt 4 connection, extra cooling doesn't seem necessary. When I tested the Acasis enclosure with my Western Digital SSD inside and connected to my M4 Mac Mini, performance matched my best Thunderbolt 4 enclosures and the results were identical whether the fan was on or off. In this case, bandwidth is a bottleneck, not thermals. My testing confirmed what most of you already know. Thermals vary a lot between SSDs. My Sabrent drive stayed stable without the fan, but the Western Digital quickly throttled unless I forced the fan on. The fan itself isn't overly loud, though you will hear it if the enclosure is close by. To me, it sounds like a laptop fan that's ramping up under load. With the fan off, the Acasis enclosure does warm up, but the aluminium shell stays cooler to the touch than my larger, passively cooled Thunderbolt 4 enclosures. Those enclosures rely on size and surface area to shed heat, whilst their cases is smaller and depends more on its built-in fan. That fan works well when set to always on, but auto mode doesn't consistently kick in when drives get hot. So if you're using a high performance SSD, you may need to enable the fan manually during sustained workloads. For a broader picture, I recommend checking out the speed test data that our cases provide. It highlights how performance depends not just on the enclosure, but also on the computer, SSD model, generation, and capacity. So far, I've been talking about using Gen 4 SSDs with the Acasis enclosure, but this enclosure is also compatible with the faster Gen 5 SSDs. But I don't think that's the route that most people should go down. As an example, here is Amazon UK, and you can see the top result is the fast Gen 4 SSD, the Samsung 990 Pro. And at the time of recording, the four terabyte version is 266 pounds. Now this is a good one to highlight because on their case's website, they've got lots of benchmarking results. And the Samsung 990 Pro is one that seems to match very well with the enclosure. And they've got lots of benchmarking results across different devices, laptops, computers, etc. And you can see that on average, read and write speeds seem to be around 6,000 megabytes per second or six gigabytes per second. So that's really impressive. That, you know, that's a, that's a fantastic drive, maybe one that you might want to look at. But underneath here on Amazon UK, you can see the faster Samsung 9100 Pro. 
And if I open this here, you'll see that this is apparently capable of up to 13,400, 14,800. So it's around 14,000, 15,000 megabytes per second. That's an impressive drive, but you're only going to get those speeds in a desktop PC. Here, we are working with a Thunderbolt cable, but you can see that the four terabyte version here retails at 394 pounds. That's about 50% more expensive, but for 50% more cost, are you going to get 50% more performance? Obviously not. Now this is something that David has covered a lot. David's obviously the person that organized the unit to be sent out to me. And he's done a lot of videos with this enclosure, but this one in particular, the world's fastest Thunderbolt 5 SSD. I'll leave a link to this. Please do check it out. It's a really good video. But you can see I'm not giving away any spoilers here. You can see in the thumbnail with that combination of that 9100 Pro and your case's drive, he's getting 6,666 megabytes per second. And that is incredible. But if we go back to the results that we were looking at earlier, that's about 10% more performance. So for about 50% more cost, you'll get about 10% more performance. Now that will vary depending on the drive that you're buying, you know, promotions, discounts and all that. But it does illustrate that the real bang for your buck is going to be from buying a Gen 4 SSD. And the reason being that fast Gen 4 SSDs, their, their maximum performance is closer to the bottleneck which Thunderbolt 5 has. Now, I still think that this being Gen 5 SSD compatible is very good because as time goes on, we're all going to have laptops and PCs which have Gen 5 SSDs in them. And that means that eventually they might find their way down to our older enclosures. So it makes sense to buy an enclosure that is Gen 5 uh, compatible. What I would say is that if you've got a Gen 5 SSD, go for it. But if you don't, I think the bang for your buck, the real value coming, you know, it comes from buying a very fast Gen 4 SSD save your money and over time, um, those Gen 5 SSDs will come down in price. There is a note about all of this though, because if I jump over to their cases website, there is an issue and it's an issue which David actually discovered and, and advised a cases about. You can see this announcement here, the TB501 Pro. Any purchases from the official website between August 20th, September 9th, there was a limited number of units that were shipped with a particular firmware, 5.6.56, and it wasn't optimized for the new Intel chip, which means that it wasn't compatible with Gen 5 SSDs. Now they have addressed that, all future versions have all got the correct version now, there's no issues there, and they're working with customers to get returns, etc. But that's something to be aware of, but it looks like that's in the past. If you're unsure, you know, contact the cases and just ask them for an update, but it looks like it was just a blip for a few weeks. There was an issue with um, particular units not being updated correctly. And one of the reasons I also wanted to talk about this is because the one that I've got is on that older firmware, that incorrect firmware. Now to the credit of Acasis, they are actually shipping me the newer firmware version. They're sending me out a corrected version. But the one that I've got just now, it's fine. I've only got Gen 4 SSDs. I'm getting, you know, like 6,000 megabytes per second. I'm getting great performance from that enclosure. So I do appreciate them sending the newer version out. And I'm, I'm quite happy with what I've got though. But when the new unit comes out, I might look again at Gen 5 SSDs. And if I do that, I might do a future video, you know, where I, I do some tests with a Gen 5 SSD and their cases enclosure. But I think the important thing you know, to note about all of this is, yes, this is a Gen 5 compatible enclosure, Gen 5 SSD enclosure, but I, I really do think the real value comes from buying a fast Gen 4 SSD. I hope you've all enjoyed learning about this Thunderbolt 5 enclosure, the Acasis TB501 Pro. I've been using it for a few weeks and I'm delighted with it because it's really transformed my Mac Studios storage setup. Previously, with my Thunderbolt 4 enclosures, I was getting between, it was usually about between 3 and 3.4 gigabytes per second. And that's good, but with this new enclosure, I've effectively doubled the read and write speeds. 
I'm getting a lot more performance. Now, with browsing the web, with watching videos, you're not going to notice that kind of performance difference. But with video editing, which is one of the main reasons I have a Mac Studio, it is something I am going to notice. I've removed a bottleneck, a potential bottleneck, and you know it's going to improve my caching times. It's going to improve my read and write times when I'm reading all these kind of 4K files. So I'm delighted. I'm also delighted that a cases are sending me out a Gen 5 version. So that's something I have to test in the future. Many thanks to a cases for sending this out and many thanks to David again for organizing this whole review and asking a cases to, to send me the unit. If you'd like to learn more, please do check out David's videos. I'll leave some links to them. Also check out the a cases website. And as I noted at the start of the video, this does retail at $239 from a cases, but they do have discounts a lot, and as you can see here, currently you can buy it for $191. I think that's good value for a Thunderbolt 5 enclosure. So yeah, check it out. Let me know what you think about this. Please do post a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on all of this. If you've enjoyed the video, if you found it useful, like, subscribe, all the good stuff, and until next time, take care.